Hi guys, let's quickly look at some of the demoscopic features of severe keratosis. So what this means is when you have a patient presenting to you with a skin lesion, um, and you place a demoscope on it, there are some features that will help you say, yes, this is severe keratosis. But usually in severe keratosis, usually even without a demoscope, most times, uh, in most cases, it's usually very obvious that this lesion is a severe keratosis. So severe keratosis or severe warts is actually a very benign um, skin lesion. Uh, it's non-contagious, it's non-cancerous, non-malignant, and, and usually there's no, there's no chance of it ever becoming malignant, except if there is an independent or it, 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 it separates, you know, um, your plastic process that goes on in the skin adjacent to the seborrheic keratosis, but the seborrheic keratosis in itself does not have the potential of undergoing a malignant change or malignant transformation. Um, so let's quickly look at some of the demoscopic, and by demoscopic, demoscopic does not mean microscopic. Demoscopic simply means a magnified, you know, uh, feature using a using a demoscope. So it's not a microscopic feature, but it's a magnified, um, you know, appearance. So some of the things you would typically see on demoscopy will be things like, you know, the milk, chocolate, globules. Uh, generally, the seborrheic keratosis looks like a stock-on piece of mud. It looks like mud, you know, F, you know, or soil that has been stuck onto the skin. Uh, so you see things like milk, chocolate, globules, you know, fissuring, ridges, crates, and papillae. Comedo like openings, it has a stock on appearance, you know, crossly. Um, there's so many colors, color variations. It looks like, it looks, how would I describe it? It looks like, imagine a muffin with, you know, milk and chocolate and cheese, just different colors, you know, um, milk, chocolate, cheese combination kind of thing, like a biscuit, a cookie. Um, so, color variation, uh, keratin plot we call the cerebriform appearance, which means sometimes, typically, like a brain, cerebriform appearance. Um, media like cysts, fat fingers, which is cerebriform appearance. So let's look at the photos, which is actually the most important way of learning. So this is a gross appearance of a cerebral keratosis. You may have seen these. It's more common in people who are more elderly or middle-aged towards people that are approaching the elderly age range. So you begin to see these in people who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Okay, it looks like an piece of earth or soil, you know, stuck onto the skin. Okay, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look appealing. So a lot of patients will come majorly for the cos cosmetic appearance. And of course, because, because of the fear of potential skin cancer, especially when they are not aware there's something called a separate wart. So this is what it looks like grossly. And on demoscopy, so I got these photos from the internet, so they are not originally mine. I'm just using them for educational and illustrative purposes. So looking at a separate keratosis demoscopically, you can see things that look like, you know, claws. You can see orange clods, brown clods, white clods, you know, black clods, other clods, F, okay, soil. It looks like soil, like, you know, like sand, clay, you know, stuck onto the skin. If you look at it, it looks like different colors of sand, different colors of soil, you know, clay soil, blah, 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 you know, stuck onto the skin, just different colors, okay? And that's how it looks. So that's one that's one appearance, one one common appearance of a devor, of a severe keratosis. Looking at these, you can also see it looks like a cookie. Okay, different colors, you know, chocolate, milk. Imagine a cookie that has chocolate, butter, cheese, milk, all mixed together. You know, this could be chocolate, so this is a brown clod, that's a yellow clod, there, white clod, just mixture. Okay, it looks like a cookie, a multicolored cookie appearance. When you look at these other 
and several characters, as you can see, the same thing. Okay. You can see the yellow clothes, the brown, the black clothes, brown clothes, white clothes, multicolored appearance. Um, obviously, the fissuring usually is more appreciated in the cross appearance. When you look at the cross appearance, it looks stuck on, and you can see lots of fissure cracks, okay, ridges and fissures. It is in the cross appearance, you have that. Demoscopically, it's difficult to actually identify fissuring. Okay, you wouldn't call these angulatures fissuring. Okay, so when we looked at basal cell carcinoma, we saw things that we described as the maple leaf appearance. So one could say, oh, it has a little a bit of maple leaf in at the edges, but it's not. So this is not basal cell carcinoma. Okay, this is seborrheic keratosis. These has some of those features we talked about in basal cell carcinoma, like the blue white veil. You can see the bluish hue, bluish veil. So one can see, oh, look at the you know possible um maple leaf appearances. But when you begin to see these kind of clods, thick clods, keratin plugging, you know, keratin plugging and thick clods, it usually tells you that um, you know, and obviously the cross appearance, before you even place your demoscope on it, your cross appearance will give you a lot of diagnostic clue. Okay, when you look at these, this typically shows the cerebriform or the fat finger appearance of cerebral keratosis. Not all will look like these demoscopically, but these typically look like a brain tissue. It looks like the gyri and sulci or sulci of the brain. And that's why it's called the fat finger appearance. You know, when you look at, imagine you look at the, 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 look at the prints, you know, uh, on the palmar aspect of your thumb or on the palm aspect of your finger pulp. It looks like you've printed that on, you know, like a fingerprint, you know, uh, fat finger appearance. So this is diagnostic, clinically diagnostic of a cerebral keratosis when you see this on demoscopy. Another fat finger appearance or cerebriform appearance looks like a brain, looks like a gyri and the sulci or sulci of the brain tissue. Once you see this, it's clinically diagnostic of a cerebral keratosis demoscopically. Another fat finger appearance of cerebral keratosis, you can see, it looks like a brain. Um, yeah, cerebral form fat finger appearance. You can see some milia-like cysts there. So those small whitish luminous dots are described as milia-like cysts. You could also, yeah, they look like white. They're not really white clots. The white clots are keratin plugins. This one just look like spaces. They're called cysts, milia-like cysts. Okay. Yeah, you could see some milia-like cysts there as well. And there's another one there. Okay. Yeah, you can see a few milia-like cysts within these finger, fat finger appearance, the small white dots. We describe those milia-like cysts. So to end, this is again, just to recap what the cross appearance of the seborrheic warts or seborrheic keratosis looks like. You can see it looks stuck on, looks like it will just, you grab the piece of soil or earth and stuck it onto the skin. And you can see lots of fissuring. Sometimes it can catch with your, you know, your, your jewelry, your clothing, you know, furniture, and it could be traumatized, could drop. And to summarize what the, Demoscopic features of the seborrheic keratosis looks like lots of clods, okay, which are essentially the keratin plugs, orange clods, white, brown, black, you know, clods. You can see the milia like cysts, small whitish dots, milia like cysts, and all of that. So you can see, um, and then you can always also see the cerebral form appearance, which is, it looks like a brain, okay? So when you see this kind of features, they are clinically, or can say demoscopically diagnostic of a cerebral keratosis. Remember, cerebral keratosis is a completely benign lesion. Usually no treatment, of course, if you want it removed for cosmetic reasons, then it can be excised, okay? Or sometimes laser treatment and other forms of you know, treatments can be used for that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more demoscopic series that will be on
Thank you very much.